Hello students, in this video I shall discuss R.K. Narayan's short story out of business. This video has been specially designed for the undergraduate students of the University of Calcutta. This short story is a part of the compulsory English syllabus of the university. Let us first know a few important things about the author R.K. Narayan. His full name is Rasipuram Krishnaswami Narayan. However, his original name is pretty lengthy Rasipuram Krishnaswami Ayyar Narayanaswami. He was born on 10th October 1906 in Madras. His father was a school teacher whose job was transferable. So he had to spend his early years in Madras in the care of his grandmother and a maternal uncle. He was deeply influenced by his grandmother that is evident in many of his literary works. His first schooling was in Madras. Later, he was shifted to the school in Mysore where his father was the headmaster. He graduated from Maharaja College of Mysore with a BA degree in 1930. He embarked on his literary journey in his 20s and won many accolades over his more than six decade long writing career. He died on 13th May 2001 in Chennai at the age of 94 due to age related ailments. Now let us know a few more important things about the author's literary career. His first novel was Swami and Friends which was published in 1935. The setting of this novel and many of his later works is the fictional South Indian town Malguri. Now, why did he create the fictional town of Malguri? Malguri represents India in miniature. Like India, the town of Malguri also undergoes tremendous changes during the colonial period. So, you can say that it becomes a kind of symbol of transitional India. The struggle of common man is portrayed against the backdrop of Malguri. Even in the present short story, you will see that the protagonist Rama Rao is also a common man and he is situated in Malguri. Some of his best known novels are The Bachelor of Arts which was published in 1937, The English Teacher published in 1945, Waiting for the Mahatma published in 1955, The Guide in 1958, The Man Eater of Malguri in 1961, The Vendor of Sweets in 1967 and A Tiger for Malguri in 1983. Some of his famous short story collections include Malguri Days 1942 and Astrologer's Day and Other Stories 1947, Lolly Road and Other Stories 1956, Under the Banyan Tree and Other Stories 1985 and The Grandmother's Tale and Selected Stories 1994. He also published shortened modern prose versions of the Ramayana in 1972 and the Mahabharata in 1978. Now let us discuss the story out of business. It is a short story published in the collection of stories Malguri Days in 
42. It depicts the struggles of Rama Rao, a simple family man and the Malhuri agent of a gramophone company who went out of business due to some unfortunate circumstances. When the story opens, we see Rama Rao in a dire financial situation. He had put into that agency, that gramophone company, his inherited money as security. Now, he spent a very comfortable and a sort of luxurious life when he was quite successful in his business. So, uh, let us know the lifestyle of Rama Rao and his family before he faced this financial crisis. So, before the financial crisis, he, along with his wife and children, used to spend a life of great comfort for five years. That means he spent five years of his life as a successful businessman. He built a small bungalow in the extension and was planning to buy, a, buy an old baby car. They had a cook and a servant and their children were studying in fashionable nursery school. Rama Rao's wife used to sparkle with flowers and a bright dress every evening. She had friendly neighbors in the extension and a women's club and almost everything that kept her happy there. Even the children used to get new clothes once in three months. The house had a compound and they used to play with her dozen other children. In the school, they had numerous friends. So you can understand that Rama Rao spent a very comfortable life with his family when he was spending his life as a successful businessman. Now, why did Rama Rao go out of business? The gramophone company which had its factory somewhere in northern India collapsed all on a sudden. Why? Because a bank in Lahore crashed. Now, why did the bank in Lahore crash? The bank crashed due to the death of a Bombay financier whose car flew off sideways while driving downhill and he fell from a height of 300 feet but people believed that he actually committed suicide because the previous night his wife had eloped with his cashier. All these incidents were responsible for Rama Rao's great financial loss. So you can see how one trivial incident brought such a disaster in Rama Rao's family. He could not even get a refund of his security deposit as there was hardly anyone to receive his application for the same. So Rama Rao tried his best to get back the security deposit held with the gramophone company but he ultimately could not get that money. So he had to adapt some measures of economy but it was Rama Rao's wife who adapted some measures of economy in order to maintain the household. The first thing that she did was to send away the cook and the servant. Then she withdrew the children from a fashionable nursery school and she sent them to a free primary school. They let out their bungalow and moved to a very small house behind the market. 
Now their only source of income was this small rent as the little money they had in bank was about to get exhausted. Now Ramarao's life after going out of business. Ramarao sent out a dozen applications a day. It was quite impossible for him to get a job as he was approaching 40 and he had no previous experience of doing a job. And you all can understand how difficult it is for a man of 40 to get a job as a fresher. Every day he returned home with a sad face. He could not face his wife and children who used to wait for him expectantly. His wife spent all her time cooked up in the kitchen and she no longer changed her dress in the evenings because she had lost that spirit to change her dress to deck herself up the way she used to do while living in the extension. The children had no friends. They could play only in the backyard of the house. They all own out shirts with tears and friends. If you remember earlier, they used to get new clothes once in three months. At this time, Rama Rao suddenly came across a journal, the captain in the Jubilee reading room. The journal consisted of four pages and was entirely devoted to crossword puzzles. It offered every week a first prize of rupees 4000. He devoted himself completely to solving crossword puzzles. Every time he got confused with one or two answers. Tallow or fallow, bad or mad or sad, etc. Students here notice that how interestingly all these words or all the options that came to Rama Rao's mind actually depicted his mental state, the kind of mental condition he had during that time. Rama Rao had to invest a little money to send his solutions. Throughout the week, he used to wait with a lot of hope, but the results would bring him only despair. Every time it was someone else who won the prize, either someone in Baluchistan or someone in Dhaka or someone in Sela. And it took three hours for Rama Rao to recover from this shock, from this failure every time. Now, the alternating emotions of hope and despair took a toll on his nerves. At home, he hardly spoke to anyone. He quarreled with his wife and literally forced her to give him the money to send the solutions for crossword puzzles, making a slight sacrifice in household expenses. Now, later on, one day, the journal announced a special prize of rupees 8,000, exactly the double of the usual prize money. This again kindled hope in Rama Rao and this time he did not want to take any risk. So he decided to send four solutions with the probable answers. To send four solutions, he demanded five rupees from his wife. She was quite reluctant to spare that money, but finally she had to give this money to him. Now, why was she reluctant? Because five rupees were nearly a week's food for the family. Again, Rama Rao pondered on the probable answers for the phrase, some people prefer this to despair. And he came up with the following answers, hope, dope, and rope. Again, all the emotions that were coming into his mind during this period of crisis. 
were his options. If Rama Rao won the coveted award of rupees 8000, then what he would do? So he, after sending the answers for the coveted prize money of rupees 8000, Rama Rao started building castle in the air. He would send away his tenants. This was his plan. Okay, He would send away his tenants, move to the bungalow in the extension with his family and leave the entire amount received as prize in his wife's hands for her to manage the household for a couple of years. And he himself would take a hundred and go to Madras to find some profitable work there. Now, what happened on the day of the result? Ramarao's dreams were shattered the moment he saw the result. He found that he had made too many mistakes. He started contemplating suicide in utter disappointment and frustration. He walked down the railway line a couple of miles thinking that life was not worth living. Being born in this world itself was a misfortune for him and he thought that one should end such a life on a railway track or with a rope. So he went to the railway station. He lay across the lines waiting for the train from Trichinopoli to end his life within 10 minutes. Minutes passed into hours but nothing happened. He got tired of lying down there and walked back to the station to inquire about the train to find out the reason. Then this is what he get to he got to know from the station master. A good train had derailed three stations off and the way is blocked. They had sent up a relief all the trains will be at least three hours late today immediately after listening to this reply Rama Rao could realize the value of life and he cried out with joy God you have shown me mercy and then he immediately ran home his wife quite anxious and worried, was waiting eagerly for him at the door. Even the children were waiting eagerly. Just a few minutes ago, they went to sleep. So he was warmly welcomed by her on his return home. At the dinner table, she informed him that their tenant in the extension bungalow had shown interest in buying the bungalow and offering good cash for it. At this, Rama Rao replied joyously that they could get four and a half thousand for it. He further added that he would take five hundred and go to Madras to find something useful there. She would keep the rest of the amount to run the household but before anything else, they would move to a better locality. Rama Rao also so not to indulge himself in crossword puzzles ever in his life. With this, the story ended on a happy note. It started with a note of despair when Rama Rao was going through the most difficult phase of his life and it ended on a note of hope when everything in Rama Rao's life was going to be better. Students, I hope you find this video useful. If you find this useful, then please like, share and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video as in the next video I am going to 
share with you the most important questions from the text. Thank you so much.